Okay, welcome to the Photoshop workshop. This is what we're going to recreate today. <clears throat> and uh, we'll leave this open the entire time and we'll switch back and forth um, on these tabs up here. So if you open uh, Photoshop and things are not where they where you want them to be, you want to pop everything back into place, you can come over here and click this disclosure arrow and make sure you're in Essentials, click on Reset Essentials and everything will pop back into place. Okay, <clears throat> um, this workshop is designed for a computer lab where the computers are not super powerful, so we're gonna work in 150 pixels per inch. Uh, let's make a new file. So click on File, and then New. We have a bunch of presets here. Head on over to Print, and we're gonna work letter size. Let's change the orientation, orientation to Landscape, okay? And then by default, 300 pixels per inch, which is really good resolution for, um, for printing. Um, but we need to bring it down because um, this workshop is taught in the lab here at Rice that the computers are not great. So 150 pixels per inch today. And um, <clears throat> we'll keep the background as white, just so you know you can change that um, when you're first creating the file. All right, I'm going to click on Create. And... Um, with two files open, you can switch between them like so. All right. We're first going to do this uh, background gradient. Let me show you how to do that. Um, and here's our UI here. The left are all of our tools. So we have a lot of selection tools up here, and then some photo retouching tools, and then just these kind of like miscellaneous tools down here. Um, and then this is our layers over here. <clears throat> We're going to work in this a lot today. I'm just going to make a new layer, um, and it's going to be a gradient layer. So this is just a normal pixel layer for the background. Um, if I click right here, I can make all kinds of different special layers. I'm going to go to gradient. All right. So here's a preview. There's lots of uh, options you can choose. I'm just going to choose maybe one of these uh, orange or basics. Let's see here. Um, we will work with this orange one. Okay. And then let's change this to um, radial. And there's a couple of other options. You can change, you can rotate it, and you can also scale it up. I'm going to scale this up to 195. All right. And click OK. So you'll know that this is a um, different kind of layer. Um, and you can also double click on here to make changes. So this is non-destructive and this is kind of nice. You can also draw uh, gradients out manually with the gradient tool. I just want to show you this other option as well is, uh, is nice as well. All right, let's uh, get our cameras in. So I'm going to open my first camera photo. I'll go to file open. And let's open up the Nikon. Okay, so the most time consuming thing in Photoshop is actually uh, selection. Um, <clears throat> there's lots of different ways of selecting. If you look at the fourth tool from top, uh, by default we have the object selection tool, which is um, uses artificial intelligence to select uh, what you need to select. Uh, I'll do this on the second camera, but for now I'm going to use a more basic tool uh, before we move on. So any of these tools, if you click and hold them, You'll see the little disclosure arrow. If you click and hold, there's other tools hiding underneath. Okay, there's the magic wand tool, which has been in Photoshop, I think, just about forever. And then there's the quick selection tool. Um, we're going to start with the quick selection tool. And let me bring up the size here, maybe to around 120, something like that. And you'll see my cursor changes. And by default, whenever I click, it's going to add to selection. So the way this works is you're kind of painting the selection that you want. Okay, before we move on, let me show you how to zoom in and out quickly. Uh, you don't have to use the magnifying glass. Um, the best way to zoom, the fastest way in Adobe is holding Alt, Option on, on a Mac, and uh, just scroll in. Okay, there we go. So with my quick selection tool, you can click and let go and see what it does. Um, and then if you're ready, you just click and hold down the mouse and just brush your, um, 
over uh, over the item and it will select it for you. You can see these tiny little dancing ants uh, to let you know that this is what is selected. And uh, you'll see a couple problems here. So uh, I've not selected, or excuse me, I've over selected here on this shadow. I don't want that. I'll need to go in and edit that. And then I'm also missing um, the letters here of Nikon. So the letters are gonna be easy. I'll just click, there we go. And those are now selected. And let me zoom in here and resolve this shadow. So I'm gonna hold down Alt and scroll in to zoom, um, get it where I want it. And my brush is a little bit too big. So let me turn it down to maybe like 75 or actually 60. All right. And um, up until now, we've been adding to selection. You'll see here. You don't have to actually change the tool up here. So um, you can do the inverse of what you're currently doing. I'm currently adding to selection. But if I hold down Alt on the keyboard, and it's going to be hard to see, but my cursor is going to have a negative symbol. And I'm actually just jumping into the remove from selection. So a lot of the tools in Photoshop, the brush tools, and well, quite a lot of them, if you hold down Alt, it'll give you the in, the opposite of what you're currently doing. Okay, so I'm holding down Alt, and now if I click, it's going to remove from selection. There we go. Okay, so this is not perfect, but um, it's a good starting point. Okay, uh, done with the selection tool, I'm going to head on over to the move tool, and I'm ready to copy and paste this in. For this camera and the next camera, I'm just going to do a simple um, control C, control V, which is gonna be destructive. I'm not gonna get uh, everything from the original image. Um, and then on the third image, when we work with the, the owl, I'm going to show you a completely non-destructive way of working. All right, so let's learn the destructive way first. Okay, um, I'm on a Mac, so I'm gonna do command C. If you're on Windows, control C to copy, All right? Let me head on over here. And then I'm gonna do a command V as in Victor. If you're on Windows, control V. And there's my camera. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, this camera has been pasted in into a new layer and I can rename it now. I'll rename it to Nikon. And if I wanna scale this camera down, um, let me show you what happens. So uh, you don't have to do this now. You can just watch up here first. I'm gonna do command T for transform, and then I'm going to make this much smaller. Okay, there we go. And then let's say I go about with my, with my life and I do some other edits and then I come back and I decide, uh, actually I want this camera to be bigger. So I'll do Command T again and let me make it much bigger and let's see what happens. Okay, it becomes very pixelated. So this is the default behavior with Photoshop. It will, um, you know, it'll lose information when you're working. There's an extra step that you need to do to make sure this doesn't happen. So let me command Z to go back here. And let's make this, um, let's make this non-destructive. So let's preserve all these pixels here. And we'll do that by coming over to my Nikon layer, right clicking on it and go to convert to smart object. Convert to smart object, okay? After doing so, this little icon is going to change. It might be hard to see on your screen. Um, and now if I edit it and then I decide I want to make it big again, it's not going to become pixelated. Okay. You can see all of those original pixels are still there. All right. So um, make sure you right click, convert to smart object. And when you're ready, you can do C Command T on a Mac or Control T on Windows for the free transform tool. And this is another odd thing about Photoshop. This is not an icon here for free transform. It's actually up here under edit and free transform. But uh, I would suggest remembering the shortcut because you're going to use it quite frequently, frequently in Photoshop. All right, when you're ready, just make this camera about a quarter the size of the page and we'll move on. All right, let me go back to my knockdown. I don't need this anymore, I'll close it. And let's open up the Sony image. We'll go to File, Open, and open up Sony. All right, and with this one, we're gonna work a little bit differently, just so, so we can learn different tools. Uh, we're just gonna use the 
uh, artificial intelligence tool. So if you remember, the fourth tool from top, click and hold that, and we can change to different tools. Let's use the object selection tool, okay? Um, so the way this works is it'll actually load things, I think, automatically like it has done now. So I can actually just click and let go if I wanted, and it would select this camera. Um, or if you're not sure, you can also just use, it's on rectangle mode, so I can come in here and just draw a rectangle and it'll do the same thing, it'll grab the camera. So as you can see, this is much faster and it does really well even on these curved shapes and overall, it's, it's quite good, okay? So um, that was easy. Let's copy and paste this into our document. Uh, we'll work destructively once again, so do uh, Command C or Control C. Go back to your document, do a Command V as in Victor. And you can see with this artificial intelligence tool, it kind of grabs some of that white. Um, so I would say, let me, let me go back to the move tool so we, you can see what I'm talking about. Some of this white here is actually a reflection, right? And I would say this too would be a reflection of light, but this white little halo uh, is, is actually the background. Um, so this metal is not that reflective. It's not reflecting on that, on that edge here. So it's not perfect, you can see. Um, so you might have to go in and retouch. Or actually, I would just choke this in. Um, by a couple pixels. You can see, yeah, one, two, yeah, two pixels. I would just choke it in. But um, that's okay. We'll, we'll deal with this for now. So let me uh, rename this to Nikon, or excuse me, Sony. There we go. And once again, right click and convert to smart object. All right. Then we'll do Command T or Control T on Windows, make this guy smaller. And with, with the free transform tool, you'll have to hit enter or click this little checkbox here to finish the tool. Otherwise, Photoshop won't let you do anything else. So I'll hit enter and there we go. There's our Sony. So um, let me put these two side by side and let's take a look at them uh, before we move to the next image. So y as you can see here, this um, is a slightly different material. It's a little more rough and the lighting is a little different on this Nikon. Um, and so it appears a little bit brighter than our Sony. Okay, um, I'm gonna do just a very simple tweak to try to make these two look similar. Um, so with my Sony selected, I'm gonna go here to image, adjustments, and then we're gonna do level levels. And levels is definitely more, uh, it's, it's simpler than um, curves tool but it's useful if you just want to do things quickly, you don't want to have to overthink things. Um, so this is the histogram of just the Sony pixels, okay? You can see the big spike here um, near the blacks, meaning there's a lot of darker pixels, a lot of information there. These are the midtones, not much here. And then we have a tiny little spike here on the highlights or the whites. That's probably from the, the text here where it says Sony. Um, so I'm just going to remap these midtones. All I have to do is grab this middle slider and kind of move it to the left a little bit until it kind of looks like the Nikon. And that's it. 1.26, I think that's fine. I'll click OK. OK, so you can see these look somewhat similar. And you'll notice because we converted this to a smart object, that adjustment is coming in as a smart filter or smart adjustment, whatever you want to call it which is really nice. It's non-destructive. I can come in here. I can turn it on and off to see the difference. I can also double click it uh, and, and tweak it if I like at any moment. All right, so those are our two cameras and they are looking fine. I'm going to move this back a little bit and let's work on our third image. So let me close the Sony and let's open our third image, which is the owl. I'll go file open. And let's go to Toy Owl. Okay. And this is a digital photo here of 
of uh, a little egg timer. So with this image back, I would say maybe five years ago, I would have used, before the artificial intelligence tool, um, I might have used another another way. Uh, so there was a, a tool called Select uh, In Focus, and it would pretty much decide what was in focus. It might even use some metadata from the photo, from the camera settings, and try to select just what's in focus. And it was kind of okay, um, but it wasn't great. There's also, of course, we had the quick selection tool, which um, would also work here. But the artificial intelligence tool is just so amazing. Um, that's really all you need. So let's just use the object selection tool. Okay, click on it. And we can just draw a rectangle around the owl. There we go. See how fast that was? All right. <clears throat> so we've selected the owl. And um, I'm actually, w instead of doing uh, Control-C, Control-V this time, we're going to change things up. So I want to work in a completely non-destructive way um, so, so that we keep the background and all the pixels. Um, we're going to mask this out with a vector mask. Photoshop calls it a vector mask. <coughs> um, and anytime you're in any of these selection tools, including this uh, object selection tool, this will pop up here, select and mask. Okay, you can either click it here or you can go down here um, and select it this way. I just like to do it this way, so I'm gonna click this button, select and mask. And what it does, it brings you to this little editor here where you can make some changes before you mask this out. Transparency will show you, um, you know, it'll make the background transparent so you can kind of see the subject, or if you need to see a little bit of the background, um, you can bring that down. All right, so this is gonna be, um, actually you have quick selection tool here, and then you have the brush tool. So I'm gonna go to the brush tool and it's just like we had with the quick selection tool, you can uh, remove or add uh, from, from here, from the selection. So if I come down here, you see there's a bit of this shadow that's not the owl. Okay, so I can hold down the alt and you can see it'll switch to uh, subtract and I can try to paint away some of that. So you can make some tweaks, some adjustments right now before you um, commit to this. And you know, there's some other stuff up here. It's gonna be really hard for me to trace over this with a brush, you know, by hand. Um, so that's kind of all I'll do here. Another tip is if you're zoomed all the way in, you can walk around the image with your hand tool. You don't have to select the hand right here. You can hold on spacebar, and this is really handy. Okay. Um, it's a little bit ambiguous here of, of this. This might be the backside where it's reflecting the background or it might actually be the background. Let me see here. Yeah, this this is good. So the object, object selection tool did a good job. Um, this actually is the owl, the plastic of the owl. All right, anyway, so let's move on. Um, I'm not gonna add, I'm not gonna tweak it anymore. It looks pretty good to me. Um, we're gonna, but we are gonna do some global refinements. So you can see um, there's some black here. So it's getting a bit of the background, but it's a very kind of complex shape. So what I'll do is I'll go to the global refinements and then there's this shift edge and I can bring this all the way to negative 100 and you can see the difference here. So look at it now, negative 100. And then if I go to positive 100, you see it gets much thicker. This is basically cho a choke, it's choking it in. So I'm gonna do negative 100 to really choke it in, okay. That's shift edge. And then I'm also gonna turn up smooth. So uh, if your computer's slow, you just type it in. Don't drag the slider because it will, um, it'll just recalculate it constantly and it'll slow your computer down. So I'm going to 100 smooth and then negative 100 for shift edge. And I think that's looking much better. You can see it's even smoothed out, smoothed it out and it's a very smooth shape. So I'm happy with this, okay? Now we're almost done. Um, head on over to the bottom here, output settings. Okay, and open the disclosure arrow. 
output to, and by default, it's going to output to selection. Okay, but um, I already know what I want. I want to make a mask. So let's turn this, uh, click this, and go to the least destructive, even this is being redundant, uh, new layer with layer mask. So this is going to make a copy, and it's going to create a layer mask. So yeah, let's be super redundant here. Just why not? New layer with layer mask. Click OK. And you can see what it does. It has uh, created, let me get out of the object selection tool. OK. Um, it's created a new layer. And here's the layer mask, which Photoshop calls um, a vector mask. And it even hid the background, the original image. All right, so this is looking pretty good. This is what I want. Uh, let me show you how the vector mask works. So um, it's actually active right now. You see the white box around it? Anything I add or paint or do anything here, it's actually going to do it on the vector mask. So if you see, if I paint here, it's actually painting um, into the vector mask because this is active. So if I paint black, black will hide the image and white will reveal the image. Okay. Um, so just be aware of that. If you're, if you need to actually uh, paint or change the pic original pixels, you'll have to click here. And now I'm actually painting into the, um, to the original pixels. Okay. Uh, the next thing you might want to check out is uh, just seeing the vector mask. So if I hold down Alt and I click here on the mask, it'll temporarily take me straight to the mask itself, and I can get a good readout of exactly what I'm working with. So you might even you might even find little mess you know errors where there's parts of the background that are being revealed. Okay. So that's the vector mask. That's all we're going to do today. To get back into your image, just click here, and now we're back into the image. All right, so this owl is ready to go, ready to go, and um, I'm I want to commit to this non-destructive workflow. Um, so I want to actually take in this entire layer as is with the mask. There's a couple ways of doing this. You can actually um, you can right click I think, or you can go to move layer. Um, That's okay. I don't know where it is right now. So um, the other way you can do this, which is I think a little easier, is go to the move tool. Uh, actually, it doesn't matter what tool you're in. And you're going to grab this entire layer, and we're going to hover over here and drop it into our untitled document. Okay. So get into this gray area here, click and hold down your mouse, and then you'll need to come all the way up here and then hover over which document you want. All right, you're not done yet. You also have to come down and then let go. Okay, and you can see it brought in the layer with the layer mask and everything else. If you have effects, um, adjustments, whatever, all of that's gonna come in. So this is a really handy way of moving between open um, Photoshop files. All right, so let's go ahead, before I even uh, scale it down, let's make it a smart object. So I'll right click, convert to smart object. There we go. And let's now scale this down with free transform. So command T or control T and make this smaller. All right. And then of course we'll have to hit enter. And there we go, there's our owl. So let me zoom into this owl and let's do a couple of adjustments. Let me rename it before we begin. All right, go up here to image adjustments. And then the first thing we'll do is brightness contrast, a really simple effect here to kind of, you know, brighten things up, make it look a little nicer. Maybe contrast, we'll do something like 30 brightness, we'll bring it up. All right, that looks fine, I'll click okay. This is coming in as a smart filter, so you can always change it after the fact. 
And the next thing I'm going to do is hue saturation. Right? So go to image, adjustment, hue saturation. All right. So you'll see here with hue saturation, um, if I change hue, it will change all of the pixels in my owl, owl layer. Right? And you know you can change lightness, for example, and saturation. So uh, I want to show you one other feature that's kind of elusive, um, and that's th this thing right here. All right. So this will allow you to change just certain color ranges um, without having to mask, without having to duplicate layers, without having to go through a bunch of other stuff. Okay. So you need to activate it. So I'll click here to turn it on. And by default, I think it's going to change the saturation. Uh, you're, I'm hovering right now and you can read the text. You can also add shortcuts to change, you know, between these three. It's fine. I'm just going to do saturation um, for now. I'm going to go into the beak. And this orange here is what I want. I'm going to click and hold down the mouse. And then while I'm still holding down the mouse, I can turn left and right. And you can see it's changing the saturation of only that color, right? We have some orange on his eyes, so you can see that's why it's changing it there as well, All right? <clears throat> so I um, actually just want saturation as is, but after doing that first edit, you can see some changes. It's now switched to reds, and it's giving us this little readout here of a color ribbon, All right? The top color ribbon is the original color, bottom color ribbon is what it's being changed to. So uh, we had done saturation, let's do hue. So if you change the hue now, you can see the change. Here's the original orange, and I go straight down, this is what the result is. And then we have, this is the main change here, and then this is the roll off or the fall off. So if this is a change of one, and this is a change of zero, and there's a gradient here. So, you know, 0 0.987654210. So it changes less over this. There's a gradient. All right. Um, okay, so that's looking fine. I'm, maybe I'll turn down the saturation or something like that. And we are done. So I'll click OK. And you'll see that adjustment comes in here on the stack. And I can turn it on and off. And I can also double click to make changes. Uh, be aware that if you double click, it's going to default here. It's going to go back to master. So it's going to be changing the entire, the entire document, uh, the, excuse me, the, the entire layer. If you want to go back to your beak, the changes you made on reds, then you can go here and go back to reds, All right? And those are our previous changes. Okay, that's it for the owl. And let's see the next step. So I'm going to go to my completed document. We have our owl and our cameras. And the next thing we'll go over is um, layer styles. Oh, excuse me. Uh, let's go here. Let me get the books. Yeah, here, layer styles. All right. <coughs> All right. So for the cameras, we have a glow here. <coughs> on both cameras. And then for the owl, we have a drop shadow. So let me show you how to do those. I'm gonna head on over to my Nikon. So I'll click on the Nikon, and I'm gonna add the layer styles. Click the FX button and go to um, Outer Glow. So I'm gonna click Outer Glow. <coughs> There's lots of different layer styles we can add or remove. We can tick them on and off like this. This is non-destructive. You can come in here at any time, turn them on and off, or adjust them. And you can see a tiny little bit of glow. Let me make the size bigger. So right here for size, I'm going to bring this up, and you can see the glow. And you can also change the opacity or how opaque it is. OK. And you can even change the color. So if I give it you know, kind of like a yellowish tint, it'll kind of blend in a little bit more with that background. You don't have to do that showing you all right and I think that's fine so size 73 and we'll click OK now for the Sony click on the Sony go to FX 
an outer glow. And it will remember what you just did with the other one. So that's kind of nice. I'll just click OK. All right, now for the owl. I'm going to click on the owl. And I'm going to go to FX. This time I'm going to do Drop Shadow right here. And this one's nice. It'll kind of blend it in with the environment, make it look like they're all part of the same image. OK, so let me change the distance so you can see here the distance. And then I like to also change the angle of the light. Maybe I'll come from the light will come from the top right corner. So I'll just turn here, change the the angle. Now this has use global light selected, which means <coughs> um, any uh, any of these layers where I have this layer style, if this box is ticked on, they're all going to share the same uh, the same uh, attributes. So if I change the light on the angle on one of them, all of them will also change, which is typically what you want so that everything looks like it's a part of the same lighting. Okay, and let me just turn up the, um, the size to soften it up a little bit. Looks fine, and compare with the opacity too. Okay, so I think that looks okay. I'll click okay. Those are layer layer styles, okay? And you can see, um, well, it'll give you a little icon here. So it under effects, that's going to be the layer styles. You can also double click to make changes. Okay, we're done with layer styles. Let's take a look at um, the type, the text. So we'll do the text really quickly. Um, it's not too complicated. And then lastly, we'll do the. Um, the VS and the flag, all right? So for the typography, we'll just use the type tool right here. And I'm not gonna, I'm not going to um, make a type, excuse me, I'm not, I'm not gonna make a text box. I'm just gonna click and let go because I, oh, it's on vertical right now, whoops. Let me click and hold and make sure this is on horizontal type tool, okay? If you click and drag, you'll make a text box, but we don't want that. We just want to click and let go, all right? So we have one line of text. Uh, I'm gonna call this one VSLR. Double click to highlight, and you can change the size. <coughs> uh, this one thing is nice about Photoshop is you can actually click and hold the icon here and drag. Uh, I wish Illustrator and InDesign had this feature. Uh, it's, it's really nice. All right, and let's make some changes. I'm going to do Married Pro. Let's do, I don't know, bold italic is fine. All right, and then I can change the color. You can do all these changes up here, or you can even do it here in Properties. Properties is contextual, so depending on what you're doing, this will change. Um, just depends on you know where you want to do this. It's up to you. Let me make this a little bit more blue. OK. Here we go, DSLR. I'm done editing the text, so I'm gonna go to the Move tool. I can move it around. And I wanna make a duplicate, so uh, so everything is the same, right? I don't have to change the color and again and all that. Um, so to duplicate, the fastest way in all the Adobe programs is holding Alt, clicking, and dragging. All right, so there's our new one. Now to edit the type, I'll have to go back to the type tool, double click, and let me type in here, mirrorless. Okay, double click, and then you can make this smaller if you need to. All right, and now I'll give you some time to try to make this look like the other, um, the other one. So, uh, Command T to rotate. Um, there's a dedicated, I think there's a dedicated rotate tool, but with Command T free transform, if you just kind of hover over um, on the outside, you will get um, a little widget so you can rotate. So really all you need is uh, the free transform tool. All right. Okay, let me grab this one, Command T, excuse me, Command T on Mac, Control T on Windows. 
and just trying to get it to look like the other image here. So move the cameras around, maybe I'll rotate. It'll give you a warning um, if there's adjustments. So it's going to temporarily um, hide them, which is fine. <coughs> Okay, maybe I'll just make my owl a little bit smaller. Um, and that's fine. It's just telling you to save resources. It's going to hide the effects here. Oops. Also, if you um, you don't need to hold down Shift in Photoshop, it automatically constrains proportions. All right. Okay, looking good. Somewhat. Let me turn this a little bit. Let's now do the V and the S. This is going to be the hardest part of the workshop um, because we're going to do some hand drawing here. Let me make a new layer. So I'll go down here, click on the new layer button, and this is going to come in just as a normal pixel layer. Let me change the name. I'm going to call this one V. And I'm going to use the handy brush tool. So click on the brush tool. And um, you know I don't want it to look like that. I'm going to make a bunch of changes to my brush. So. Uh, we can go here, click on the folder, and we have a bunch of settings we can change. Okay, uh, first of all, um, let's switch to this other one because we want, oh, well, it doesn't matter. We just want to make sure the hardness is at 100. Okay, for the size, we're going to do something like. Um, 75 something like that okay hardness is at 100 and spacing we're going to bring this down to something like five or six or seven and the way this works is um it actually doesn't make this perfect looking geometry it just adds a bunch of dots right um so this is the space between each little dot. Okay, let's head on over to Shape Dynamics. And if control is pen pressure, I'm not using a pen. Let's change that to fade. Okay, and it will give you a little preview here. For fade, let's do something like, I don't know, maybe 150. And you can see what it does. It fades, it starts at um, 75. And then after 150 pixels, you have eight goes all the way down to um, to zero okay so this is kind of like a brush all right let's give it a try you can see what it looks like all right and I think that's fine we'll work with this so um, let's just have it black we can change the color later come in here and just try to draw a V it's not gonna look perfect um, just do the best you can Right. When you're done with that, we're going to make another brand new layer. So hit V plus right here. And we'll call this one S. And then come in here and you can paint S. Okay, this is not going to be easy. So if you don't get it right, just do Command Z or Control Z and try again. But actually, that one looked okay. And if you need more of a fade, you can uh, because the S is going to be a longer character. <clears throat> maybe I'll go up here to like 165 or 175. That'll give me some more room to make the S. Yeah, I think that one looks okay. And those are our letters. So we're done with the brush tool. Let's go back to the move tool. And let me close this. Um, the reason I didn't mind the color is um, I just want to get this thing done. I can always change the color after the fact. So there's a couple ways of doing this. Um, let's just do it the most sim simplistic way. I'm going to go to FX here, and there's a, uh, another one called Color Overlay. And this one's really just simple. You can come in here and change the color. So maybe I'll choose like a light blue. Uh, let's go a little darker. Maybe 
to give it a greenish tint. Let me get a little darker. Um, all right. I don't want to spend too much time. Just choose your color. Click OK. And same with the V. Go FX, color overlay. And there we go. So those are our two letters here. And um, there's actually one other change. I want to do a drop shadow to have some overlap, as you see here. So let me do that now. Go to FX, and let's do drop shadow. And now, it, and you can see it's using that same camera, ang excuse me, light angle, which is good. Um, and let's do one for the other one. So we'll do drop shadow for the V. And actually, maybe, you know, you can turn down the distance and maybe the size if you want it sharper looking. But I think that looks a little better. So 16 and 7, and let's change the other one too. Okay. Those are our letters. And these are just layers you can move around. So you can have them overlap a little bit to make it look interesting. Okay. And if you want to change the order, um, this is simple in a Photoshop. All you do is click and drag and you can change the order. So if you want the V on top or the S on top, you can just grab and move it around. I think the S on top looks a little better. <clears throat> All right. That's it for the verses. Let's take a look at what we have left. So we have our checkered flag, and we can call it call it a day. All right. So for the checkered flag, uh, we're going to open up a brand new file. Uh, well, we're going to make a new file. So let me close the toy owl. I'm not going to save it. And let's make a new file. So file new. And we're going to use this file to make our checkerboard pattern. So um, you can define all this right off the bat. Let's turn this to 150 pixels by 150 pixels. And it will be 150 pixels per inch, meaning it's one inch by one inch. All right. And white, yes, that's fine. Click on Create. All right, so we have this tiny little box. I'm going to hold down Alt, scroll in so we can see what's going on. And let me turn on uh, rulers. Rulers will let me see, um, you know, some measurements here. So click on view and then rulers. Okay. So here it starts at zero and it should go all the way to 150 over here. And over here it starts at zero, it goes all the way down to 150. So let's make some uh, rulers. There's a way of doing this um, automatically. You can actually come in here and go to um, yeah, new guide layout, and you can you can make um, a grid, for example. You can have a grid with like a gutter, uh, so spacing between each um, little square. But let's just do it manually. I want to show you the manual way. So to make a vertical line, a vertical guide, click here in this gray area of the ruler and just drag it all the way over here. And it will actually snap to the midpoint. So it's going to snap at 75. All right, same with the horizontal guide. Go over here, click and hold, and come down <coughs> to 75. So now we have four quadrants, and we can make our checkerboard. All right, so I'm going to use the rectangular marquee tool, which is basically just selects a square. And I'm going to come out here. I'm going to overshoot it. And I'm just going to click and drag to make a selection of this top left quadrant. And I'm going to fill it in with black pixels. So you don't need to use the brush tool on paint over here. It's going to take too long. You can do this a couple of ways. So um, there's a, even a paint bucket tool. But I'm just going to show you this way. So you can go here, edit, and fill edit and fill. Okay. And we have some options. And it's nice because it just shows black right here. So I'll just do black. And there we go. Okay. Now I'll do the same for the bottom right quadrant. 
Okay. And there's another shortcut which is not listed here, but I, it's very intuitive. I think it's good. Um, it's shift backspace. So if you hold on shift and hit backspace, it'll bring up the fill tool. All right, and we'll do black again, and there we go. Now I'm gonna make sure that nothing is selected. Um, actually, and I did that step really quickly. You might've missed it. After I did our, my first box, I, um, I was in a selection tool. So whenever I come in here, it will automatically deselect as soon as I click and allow me to make a new selection, okay? But when you're moving on here, it's not going to deselect automatically. So you need to deselect. Really important, you go up here, you can go to select and deselect. But I would just remember the shortcut, which is Control D or Command D on Mac. Okay, so you have nothing selected. And let's define this pattern. So to define the pattern, go up here, edit. Uh, define pattern. Okay, I'll call this one uh, checkerboard 2023. And there we go. <clears throat> so that is created. And now I can head on over to my document here. And there's a variety of, way, of ways um, to add this pattern. You can even add it as a layer style. Um, but I wanna kinda make this full circle. We started out this workshop with a, um, a special layer and let's um, finish it up with another special layer. So go over here to this white black and white circle, click on it and let's go to pattern. So previously at the beginning we did our gradient layer this time we're gonna do pattern. Okay, so we'll bring up these patterns. Just come down to your checkerboard, which should show up here. And let's bring it up to like 400. All right, click okay. And the way that pattern uh, layers work is you can actually come in here and if you click and drag, it'll change the placement of the pattern, okay? Um, and this is non-destructive at this point. So, um, if you make your if you make your document bigger, the pattern should even accommodate that. Uh, so there's a lot of flexibility here. But I don't want a huge pattern, a, a huge flag. Really, this is a lot of pixels right now. Even so, um, I'm actually going to do a process called uh, rasterization. I'm going to rasterize this layer. It's no longer going to be a special pattern layer, it's going to end up being just a bunch of finite pixels, okay? This is a destructive process, so be aware of that, um, but it also will say, well, depending on what you're doing, it could save um, some computer resources. So um, I'm gonna right click, and I'm gonna go to rasterize layer, okay? Click on that, and you'll see immediately it's gonna change uh, the icon and now it's just a normal pixel layer okay and I do want to be destructive here because I don't need all of these pixels so let's go ahead and before we even make this a smart object and we don't even, we don't even have to really um, I'm going to transform it so let's transform it first I'm gonna do command T and then I'm gonna make this much smaller for our flag and then hit enter. Okay, so there's our flag. <clears throat> and the next thing we're gonna do is add an effect to make it all wavy looking. Um, this effect might take me a couple of tries. Um, so I'm actually going to convert this to a smart object right now with these new pixels. So it's this is the resolution right now. It's fine, uh, let me right click and convert to smart object. There we go. And now I can kind of zoom in here and, and try to use my next effect to make it nice and wavy. So I'll go up here to, with it selected, I'll go to filter, distort, and wave. Okay. Now, this is one thing that's not great is the little tiny, tiny, preview here. This is not very helpful. We're going to do signed. We'll leave it at that. For number of generators, I think we just need two, or actually, um, 
Yeah, we'll do two. Okay. And then for wavelength, we can make it much bigger. You can copy my values if you want. And then amplitude, um, I don't think that should matter. Let's go ahead and try this out, click OK. And you can see it's nice and wavy. All right, I can double click here. <coughs> Let me turn off the, uh, the minimum amplitude. I think it'll make it even more wavy. There we go. OK. So this is non-destructive at, at this moment. I can double click here and make changes to the effect. Um, and the reason it comes in here is because I turned it into a smart object. If I hadn't have done that, uh, I would have to Command-Z and, and try to do it again. All right, so the, the thing about this is if I move it around, it's fine because it's moving up and down, left and right. But once I start rotating it, it's actually going to have to, it's changing the, the original uh, pixels. And so it's actually going to redo the effect. Let me show you what I mean. I do Command. Uh, Command T. It's going to temporarily take away the effect, and then if I rotate it and hit Enter, it's actually changing the shape. Okay. It's change. It's adding. It's it's a completely different uh, shape because I've changed the original pixels, and then I'm redoing this weight. Okay. If you're super happy with the way it looks, and you don't want that behavior. In other words, you love the way this looks. You just want to rotate it into his hand. Um, we'll need to commit this effect. Okay. So you can right click. Oh, sorry. Right click the layer here and uh, rasterize layer. So this is destructive. After I do rasterize layer, I will not have a chance to change the wave pattern uh, anymore. So let me rasterize it. So this is destructive, saying goodbye to that effect and now I'm working with a bunch of pixels so if I rotate these pixels it's not going to affect the the shape of the flag okay and for this one I think I want to uh, I'll just go to command T and then I'll right click maybe I want to flip this horizontally so I'll go flip horizontal so it kind of looks like he's holding the flag I think that'll look better maybe I'll make it a little bit smaller too Okay, and then I'll hit enter. There we go. And let me put a little flagpole and then we'll, we are done. So I'm going to go to my rectangle tool at the bottom here. This is going to make a vector a vector art um, rectangle. And then I'll just rotate this in place. So I'm just going to make a nice tall flagpole. And then I'll choose a color here and maybe I'll give it a, a brown, brownish color for flagpole. And then no fill, no stroke. So let me turn this down to zero. Actually, uh, there we go. Or you can just go here and no stroke. All right, so there's my flagpole. And let me command T to rotate this into place. Okay. And then let me put my, let me first of all rename this to flag. Flag on top, so it looks like it's actually attached to the flagpole. Okay, that's it for the workshop. Um, you can save this as a an image or even a Photoshop PDF um, if you want to. If you want to keep these, like the text and the vector art flag, those will stay. Um, those will stay as vector if you make a uh, export as a PDF, Photoshop PDF. If you export it as an image, it's going to rasterize on everything. It's just going to be a bunch of pixels. All right, that's it. Thank you for watching.